novel EUS guided microwave ablation of unknown resectable pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. A 72-year female with multiple comorbidities was found to have an unresectable pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. We perform U.S. guided microwave ablation. Microwave ablation is based on frictional heating produced through the oscillation of dipole molecules, inducing a control temperature rise up to 90 degrees Celsius. This novel technique provides a homogeneous and consistent energy deployment without eliciting any damage to surrounding structures. In contrast, radio frequency ablation is based on a high frequency alternating current of 450 to 500 kHz, reaching temperatures beyond 100 degrees Celsius. A theoretical benefit of microwave ablation is that it is less susceptible to heat sinks. A second-generation contrast enhancer agent was used for endoscopic ultrasound. This contrast agent comprises of sulfur hexafluoride gas microbubbles enclosed within a phospholipid shell. The microbubbles are injected intravenously, distributed strictly within the intravascular space, and display all vascular phases, enabling visualization of both the macro and microvasculature appropriately. The arterial phase begins 10 to 20 seconds after injection and lasts 25 to 35 seconds. The venous phase starts a few seconds later and lasts up to 120 seconds after injection. After this, the late phase usually lasts between four and six minutes until the contrast medium exits circulation bypassing renal and hepatic elimination via the respiratory system, making this contrast agent safe in hepatic and kidney disease. The novel cryomedical generator and its specialized 19.5 gauge needle antenna were used for microwave ablation. Even though this generator has a bipolar feature for cutting, only the microwave coagulation feature was used for this case. This is the specialized 19.5 gauge microblade fine handpiece and its needle tip. Turn on the generator by pressing the power button. Wait for instructions to attach the instrument. Insert the interface cable into the generator. Pull the plastic tab to release the handpiece. Lift up the handpiece and pull it until the catheter is outside of the coil. Insert the catheter into the endoscope working channel. Feed the catheter through until handpiece touches the lure lock. Twist to the right to secure handpiece to the endoscope. Attach the interface cable to the handpiece. Use your thumb to support the back of the connector. Select MP1 on the generator interface. Confirm selection of MP1. Select the desired ablation time using the plus and minus buttons. Confirm the ablation duration time. The handpiece is now ready to ablate. You can loosen the locking knob for the catheter length adjustment. Catheter length is adjusted using the distance ladder. Tighten the locking knob to lock the catheter length. Loosen the locking knob for needle actuation. Needle actuation is done using the proximal slider. You can tighten the locking knob to the desired length. A 72-year-old female with hypertension, diabetes mellitus, chronic kidney disease, and a history of clear renal cell carcinoma treated with an nephrectomy 10 years prior presented with a three-month history of abdominal pain, unintentional weight loss, nausea, and malaise. EUS guided microwave ablation was offered as an alternative therapy to surgery. Ablation was favored over observation in this case, since the patient was an elderly, had multiple comorbidities, hence held a high preoperative risk index. 
Also, the lesion was deemed unresectable not only due to its size, but because it was invading the splenic artery. Furthermore, the patient had refused surgical intervention and consented to palliative care with microwave ablation. EOS revealed a 35 mm by 32 mm hypoechoic pancreatic neck lesion with hyperenhancement on contrast enhanced EOS. EOS guided fine needle biopsy confirmed a pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. 2.4 milliliters of eco enhancer Sonoview was administered intravenously, enhancing the field of view of the pancreatic mass on EOS. At 24 seconds, a homogeneous enhancement of the pancreatic lesion began to be seen compared to the surrounding structures. Later, at 77 seconds, a washing of the microbubbles was observed. This procedure was performed with a 19.5 gauge needle, delivering 5.8 GHz continuously for two minutes to the targeted pancreatic tumor. After the trocar is positioned, white microbubbles progressively burst with a controlled rise of energy deployed in each shot during ablation. Repositioning of the trocar for subsequent ablations at the number of shots required was determined according to the size of the tumor and by periodically assessing with EUS the remaining targeted area. For this case, eight shots in total were needed to cover the entire lesion area. This is the lesion before microwave ablation on EUS. Following complete ablation, Previously, dark areas turn white and a decrease in the size of the lesion after microwave ablation are noted on EUS. There was no post-procedural abdominal pain or acute pancreatitis was reported on follow-up. Oxial CT scan at the four-week follow-up show good radiological response with an avascular area in the head of the pancreas corresponding to the ablation zone. Currently, the patient remains asymptomatic eight months after treatment with microwave ablation. EUS-guided microwave ablation was a feasible, effective, and safe alternative for the management of an unresectable pancreatic mass. Large case series and prospective cohorts are required to evaluate this technique in clinical practice.